in March of this year, I was a artist in residence at Haleakala National Park in, in Maui. Uh, I'd spent about a year trying to trying to apply and, and work uh, work out this arrangement, and it and it actually worked out. I worked with a group called the National Parks Arts Foundation, and they helped set up this uh, artist in residence. It, it was a great opportunity because I got to live in the park and then uh, shoot a lot of night pictures and and had a lot of access to the park itself. If you were going to do night sky photography. Uh, Hawaii is probably one of the better places to do it. It's it's in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, and so there's it's, it's not like a lot of places in the states where you're uh, within a few miles of you. There's there's lots of lights. And, uh, there's basically the ocean surrounding you. So uh, when I saw the opportunity to apply for this artist in residency, I, I really wanted to take advantage of it. Uh, the Haleakala, uh, the park, is on the, the island of Maui. Uh, the, the big island of Hawaii is where uh, Mauna Kea is, where the, uh, a lot of the observatories are. And there's also a, a group of observatories on the top of Haleakala, which I'll show you. Uh, Oahu is where Honolulu is. I, and um, I, uh, I flew into Kahului, which is the big city in, in Maui. And from Kahului up to, at least up to the visitor center uh, on the mountain, it takes about, a, it's about an hour and a half drive. Uh, you go up a fairly steep mountain, and then there's another about a 30-minute drive from the from the visitor center to the actual summit of the mountain. The park itself takes up this this green area uh, on the more the east southeast side of, of the park, and it extends uh, it extends from the summit here, which is at uh, 10,023 feet. And it, it, it's, if you kind of imagine that this is the top of the volcano, which makes up the, uh, created the most of the island of Maui, and then this is going downhill along here, and the, the, uh, there's a, a section of the park called uh, Kipahulu, which is at sea level. So the park extends from 10,023 feet down to uh, sea level. So it's this amazing uh, change in ecosystems that go uh, sort of the uh, from uh, from tropical uh, to, to alpine, so it's it's a it's a pretty amazing place. As you can see, the road uh, as you, this is the way you enter up up the mountain, and then the road leading up to the summit is a whole series of switchbacks. It's it's kind of wild. It's kind of a wild drive. It's uh, and the, the views as you're coming up the mountain are pretty spectacular as you're looking out um, uh, toward the toward the west and the north. So. I was uh, staying in uh, some ra guest ranger housing uh, right, right about here. There's a whole complex of buildings that the staff works at, and they have uh, housing that that the uh, that visiting people, mostly visiting rangers, can, can stay at. Uh, there's a visitor center uh, uh, as you as soon as you get into the entrance at around 7,000 feet here. So the the, the uh, guest housing I was at is at 7,000 feet. So that's where I live most of the time. And uh, it takes about 30 minutes to kind of go zigzagging up this road uh, to, the, to the visitor center at the, at the summit of the mountain, uh, which is, uh, it's just below, the visitor center is just below 10,000 feet. And then uh, you take another road that's, uh, you kind of go up to the actual summit. And then uh, a, a short distance from the summit, which, uh, which is not open to the general public, is, is the observatories at Haleakala. Um, I took another uh, during the middle of the my stay. I, I hiked. I hiked into the crater. You could you can hike into the crater. So if, if you ever go, there's incredible views. A, a lot of uh, you can do a lot of night observing from uh, these different outlooks, overlooks. Uh, but also, if you can hike into the crater, it's it's really worth it. You see this a uh, whole different ecosystem. Uh, and I, it, the the trail I took was really only about four miles uh, to where there was a, uh, a cabin where rangers usually stay, and they allowed me to stay there. And I also went to this area called Kipahulu, which is right along the uh, um, uh, the, the ocean. So it's at it's at sea level there. And uh, you think of how Hawaii and, and Maui, you think of palm trees and tropical breezes and all that. But uh, when I got to uh, the the top of uh, uh, Haleakala, it, it's like I was in at, in Mars because you, you look at it and there, there's this un, kind of this 
they, they call it lunar light, but I think it looks actually more like Mars. It's just, this is at the sunrise uh, looking down in the crater and you see these cinder cones that are, that are left over from past eruptions. So it's just unbelievable uh, landscape there. So you can go from there uh, down to the area of Kipahulu. So it's, it's very tropical, extremely green, uh, and, and oftentimes it's, it just rains almost the entire day. It'll, it'll stop raining, it'll, a cloud will come over and it'll start raining again. So, uh, so the, the different ecosystems are, are, are pretty amazing. Uh, the uh, the Haleakala, the word, uh, means house of the sun. And uh, so you could, uh, the, the sun is really very, very strong up there. Uh, I, I went to the summit one day to check out the observatories and looked up into the sky and there was this big sun halo up there. So it seemed appropriate. And this is a, there's a, there's a building, this is the tallest point on the, on the mountain here. And there's a sort of a, an open building where you could have this 360 degree view of the, of the area around you. Uh, there's a lot of uh, stargazing uh, on different parts of the mountain, and I ran into uh, uh, this group, uh, this Japanese stargazing group. I actually ran into the the uh, tour guide uh, named Yoshi three times because he liked this uh, this overlook that I liked a lot, and so he would bring a van load of people there, and he would do the star stargazing. And so I, I he gave me a cup of hot tea one night, and um, and he would do about an hour, hour and a half tour uh, of the sky because I first saw him because he had set up out a couple of telescopes. So I was wondering what the what the telescopes uh, I figured there's somebody doing some sort of stargazing there. Uh, so so that was fun to, to talk to him and meet up with him a few times on the on the, my trip there. From the uh, the National Park side of the summit, truck. Yeah. Let's see, uh, when, you, when I have this much uh, uh, red light in the picture, does it throw off the white balance? I can't remember what the, what the original frame looked like. I, uh, I know that I, I, was, I balanced for the, for the blackness of the sky, uh, and then I let, it, let everything else fall into place. Uh, I, I think it was fairly close to this. It was, it was probably a little, uh, let's see, probably a little bit on the cyan side. That's sort of the opposite of, of, of red. So. Um, it, it, it probably, the, this probably did, although most of the time I, I'm, I'm just, for the, the, when I'm shooting the night sky stuff, I might just keep it on the daylight balance uh, and to, to prevent the auto from trying to compensate for the different, different colors. Uh, but this is, this is Yoshi with his, with his laser pointer, and I think they were, they, I think they were actually looking more toward um, probably the Big Dipper. He was pointing out all the different stars there. Uh, but from the summit, uh, the National Park side of the summit, you could look across the, the way and you could see the Haleakala uh, observatories. Uh, we had made some contacts with the University of Hawaii people. They run the, they run the area, the observatories there. And so I got permission to uh, meet up with uh, a man that works on the, in, in, around the observatories and he was going to be my contact. And then they just said I, I could just come at any time and and photograph what I wanted to photograph. He gave me a little tour during the daytime, and so this is this is uh, from a little the top of a, a building that he said would probably make a pretty good spot for some pictures, and and he was right. Uh, these the uh, uh, domes themselves are pretty huge. This is with a 18 millimeter lens, so it's I'm, I'm pretty close, and it's a pretty wide angle lens. And the, the great thing about this view is uh, these little mountains here, th that's uh, Mount Akea, and um, that's the other, the other peak on the island of Hawaii that you can see across the way. Um, th this is one of the domes of pan stars. The, the, uh, I think there's two, there's two telescopes that are, that are searching for uh, near-Earth objects all the time. And they, they, they end up discovering a lot of, uh, a lot of comets. Uh, this is the the brand new uh, Daniel K. You know, a solar telescope, uh, which is going to which is replacing. Unfortunately, it's replacing the uh, McMath Pierce telescope at, at Kitt Peak. Uh, so they they decided to to move the whole sol solar observing to Hawaii. Uh, Preston, uh, let's see. Yeah, we're yeah we're looking um, actually more a little bit more to the east, like southeast east.
the northern part of the Milky Way here. So this is sort of looking, uh, let's see, that's actually looking more toward the south from that, from that viewpoint um, there. Because this is a viewpoint called um, Kalahaku, which, which to me was my, that was my favorite overlook because uh, it had a great view of both the crater and a, and a pretty good view of, of the sky all around. And I'll show you some pictures from that, from that viewpoint. Oh, what time of night was this? Take? Yeah. Oh, this is yeah. This is probably yeah, ten to eleven o'clock, because uh, they didn't they the group themselves didn't they didn't stay too late. I I usually stayed later, and then I, I was the only one in the in the parking area there at the overlook. Let's see. So there's the observatories, uh, and then the uh, this is about the tenth rainbow I saw during the during the trip, and I saw a lot more. And I realized that that's why the uh, the Hawaii license plate there's a rainbow. Is there's just a, a ton of rainbows. This is in the crater. When I was uh, I spent three days in the in the crater at a, a ranger cabin there, and this is the late afternoon, and I was sitting near the cabin. Uh, this these clouds come in. And then all of a sudden you see a rainbow in, 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 the, in the distance because the, the, these clouds are extremely misty. This cloud eventually came over toward where I was sitting near the, near the cabin. And it, it's almost like it was raining because the, 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 mo the moisture is so dense and, uh, and you have to either put a hat or a jacket on. And, but also you, as, a, as a result, you, you see these unbelievable rainbows in the, uh, really in, in the daytime. So because you're, the sun angle is... Even though the sun angle is high, you're kind of looking down into this valley um, from this viewpoint, so you, you you get the perfect angle for for a rainbow. I get a sense of prevailing wind. I think a, a lot of it was from, uh, I think from the east. The, the, a lot of the weather, let's see. No, I'm, yeah, a lot of the weather would come east to west uh, on the island. I mean, that's that's the way I saw it from where the uh, housing was that I stayed at. Um, I would often see a big kind of a big cloud come through. Uh, it'd, it'd be almost like you were in fog and it would, then it would clear out. And often, but oftentimes it, as you go above 7,000 feet, you were above the cloud level. So that was pretty, that was pretty amazing. And the, in fact, the summit of Haleakala at 10,000 feet, it, it's a place where people, a lot of people go for sunrise and a lot of people go uh, as a few, a little, just a fewer people go go for sunset, so it's very popular to see uh, both sunrise and sunset because you're you you are almost always above the cloud level at the at the summit. Uh, so the first night uh, I was there, I, uh, I went out just to just to see what I could see and try to take a few pictures. And the uh, the sky there, the, the Hawaii, most of the Hawaiian islands are around 20 degrees north latitude, so much much lower in the uh, on the earth than, than New York City is. Uh, so this was in in uh, early March. Uh, I, I got there the 1st of March and stayed till the 29th. So Orion's pretty high in the sky and Sirius and Procyon, but also uh, the, the star Canopus, which is generally considered a southern star, uh, is fairly high, is fairly high above. This is not the horizon. This is the, I'm looking toward the mountain. And, and so the, the mountain takes up maybe another 10 degrees. So the canopus is actually uh, f fairly high if you had a clear clear view of the horizon. So that, that was pretty interesting. Uh, from the uh, uh, from the viewpoint I was t t talking about, uh, there was this unbelievable uh, zodiac zodiacal light that you could see. I, I wasn't sure that that I'd be able to see it because the as you look to the west from from um, Haleaka, you're you're looking out over most of Maui, over the island of Maui. So these are these are the uh, lights from the towns and the cities, and the the, the layer of clouds sort of uh, almost mag magnify it. But I, I was sort of amazed. You could see this zodiacal light. Um, you could see Andromeda there, uh, the, the Pleiades, and a little bit of a faint um, northern part of the Milky Way. So it was it was sort of this amazing scene that uh, from uh, despite the uh, despite the lights. Uh, from from uh, from the island. Uh, this is with the uh, on a Nikon with the 14, 14 millimeter. Oh, I'm sorry, did that work? Uh, this is the D8, D850. I just took the the one Nikon and the one Sony A7 uh, on, on this trip. 
Yeah, so these are all with the, the Nikon ones are with the D850. Yeah. Oh, this was uh, probably about an hour and a half after the sunset. It, it gets dark quite fast. So the uh, astronomical twilight was happened a lot faster than than it than I was used to. So it actually got pretty dark uh, pretty quickly. So that so that was nice because the sun was setting I think roughly around around 6:30 6:45 in uh, uh, on this as you got higher up and then it, it would get dark pretty fast. How long did I, I'm sorry? Oh, the zodiacal light. How, how long did I think the zodiacal light lasted? Oh, it, yeah, you could see it for at least an hour after it's completely dark. And after about an hour and a half, it, it sort of starts to fade. And then, then you can't really, you could, photo, you, could, you could photograph it, but then it, it actually gets shorter and shorter because the sun is going further and further below the horizon. Uh, but uh, there's sort of this peak where you can get the very dark sky and, and a zodiacal light at the same time. And I did a couple of the, a few uh, close-ups of plants uh, that I like doing, and you could see the. Uh, boy, is that out of focus? Yeah, the plants in focus. Uh, let's see. Uh, yes, yeah, so I'm focused on the on the on the plant. It's called a, a Pukiawe plant, and then the 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 that area of of. Uh, Orion and Sirius that I showed you earlier uh, is in the background. And this one called a, a pilo shrub uh, was I was facing uh, north so it made a nice nice picture with the uh, with the Big Dipper and Polaris. The, the, also the great thing about being at 20 degrees north latitude is that you really see much a much bigger part or a different part of the of the Milky Way. Uh, I think it, where, where we are, the Milky Way ends about here on the horizon. So I was able to see further down. Th this is uh, uh, Alpha and Beta Centaurus, uh, the two stars there. And the, the Southern Cross is, was generally really close to the horizon. It would sort of be there as the as the, as it got dark, and then set maybe um, three or four hours after after sunset. So it would be very very close to the horizon, but but still, uh, still quite visible. So that was that was a, another uh, interesting thing about being that far south. Uh, let's see. This is with uh, this is with the Nikon and the fourteen millimeter. I did a few panoramas. Uh, this one this one worked out nicely. Uh, this one I waited till about five. Well, this is five twenty five in the morning. Went. After the there's a crescent moon rising here, uh, and in Venus, and let's see, this is Saturn and Jupiter. So this line of planets, as well as the crescent moon, was rising up, and there's sort of this kind of this zodiacal light here with the uh, just just before sunrise. You can see a little bit of the of the glow of the of the sunlight there, uh, but this uh, this is a uh, seven seven frame panorama that I that I put together uh, from the um, uh, from this great, uh, great overlook, and this was this would be a 24 millimeter lens on uh, on my Nikon. So I would I would shoot seven vertical frames as I as I as I panned across. Uh, these are uh, sort of a layer of clouds. It almost looks like an ocean, but these are layer of clouds as you're looking out uh, toward the east. And this is a sort of the similar view that I show you during the daytime, but but in the in the middle of the night. This is around 3:20 in the morning, uh, just after the Milky Way is, is rising. So you get this great great view, uh, looking out toward the east. Uh, Jupiter is the big bright bright thing here, uh, and it was uh, uh, I think it, uh, it was worth waking up pretty early in the morning to see uh, to see this view of the of the Milky Way. This is sort of some of the uh, the glow from the city lights uh, actually illuminating uh, the, the the white the white domes. There there was enough. Uh, I didn't think there would be very much at all, but there, there seemed to be. And there was some 
some low-level lighting uh, around the observatories that that I think sp spilled over onto the onto the domes here. Oh yeah, these are all the dark lanes right around here. Um, the, the area just near Sagittarius. There's there's uh, Antares, and then the dark lanes that go up through that part of it, uh, above the Milky Way there. The uh, I mean our our view of the Milky Way kind of ends right around here. So everything down this way is you have to be much further south. In, uh, if you're down toward like in Arizona and New Mexico, you kind of see up to right about here. But but this whole area then is uh, is below the horizon. And I did this panorama. This is a six frame panorama as you're going left to right of the. Um, Oh, sorry, what? Oh, it's weird. The lightning from here. Oh, this is much better. Uh, so this is the panorama. Uh, so these are the two uh, the two pan star uh, domes here, and then the solar telescope uh, there. Oh, oh, right. Uh, let's see. Let me go. Let me try to go back to those. Yeah, I can see a little bit more detail there. You can see that. You can actually see the plant there. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, this was, a, I think, a, a plant that's not endemic, but pretty, uh, that grows in only in a few places, like Haleakala. Uh, and there's a pilo shrub with the, with the Big Dipper and Polaris. I'll just go through a few more of these. So there's... The, uh, the stretch of the Milky Way with the Southern Cross, and in this panorama, so it's pretty uh, pretty interesting to be in around the observatories at night. Oftentimes, it would get so windy that one night I just left because uh, I was afraid the tripod was going to fall over because uh, the wind really picks up. You're you're completely exposed. There's nothing. There's nothing higher than you because you're on the on the summit of this volcano. So that was that was kind of crazy. Uh, the, the, this panorama, was, actually, all the panoramas I was shooting, I did with the 24 millimeter lens, and and I just did a whole series of vertical shots. This was six six frames uh, assembled together, and then I did a star trail with uh, with my I had a the Sony set up to the star, the star trail, and I was shooting the other individual shots with, with my Nikon. Uh, so this the second week I was there, well, so the middle of the third week, uh, I, I hiked into the crater, um, and I uh, they, they loaned me a backpack and some, some camping equipment. So, uh, and normally it, 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 a hike would be fairly, uh, not a big deal, uh, except I had about 10 or 15 pounds of camera equipment. So I had to have that with all my food and supplies and everything like that. So uh, the, the pack itself was pretty heavy, but it was definitely worth worth hiking in, into the crater. 
Um, this is the silver sword plant um, in Hawaii, and it's uh, Ahina Hina. And it's this unbelievably looking plant that it almost looks, it looks very alien even during the daytime when you see it. Um, it's very silvery in color, and it's, it's actually related to the sunflower, apparently. And so uh, eons ago, a sunflower seed made its way up, they, they think probably on a bird, to, uh, to Haleakala. So th this plant only exists in Haleakala National Park. It doesn't exist anywhere else. And over the years, it's, it's a sunflower that somehow adapted to the environment there, the high altitude, the uh, super harsh sunlight. Uh, and a pretty rugged atmosphere there. So it's, it, it's adapted. It, it flowers once in its lifetime and then, and then it dies. So it, it, it's called the silver sword. Uh, that's, a, that's a common name for it. So it's very silvery in color. This is the, the, the landscape here is being lit up by a, a, a crescent moon. It, it's a couple days short of first quarter. So it's a fairly bright moon uh, lighting, up the, lighting up the landscape. And there's a, uh, uh, this is the, another silver, a different silver sword uh, being, being lit from the, from the back. In, uh, in, and you can see that other than the silver sword and a, and a couple low-lying shrubs, there's not a whole lot of, of uh, plant life, in, in, at least in this part. This is all uh, sort of the remnants of the, of the lava flows that were in, in, uh, inside the crater. And so the, the lava flows themselves, the rocks um, make these great silhouettes, these great out, outlines uh, for, uh, uh, for pictures of the sky. And uh, this, is called, this is a fern that, that's growing out of one of the lava, lava formations uh, being lit up by the, uh, by the moon. So after I climbed back out of the, out of the crater, a couple days later, uh, it was full moon. And so this is the full moon uh, setting. The, the morning, the morning of the full moon, uh, it, it sets right around sunrise. So the uh, this is the full moon setting, almost a nearly full moon setting, right, right at sunrise. So I, I, I'm at the summit of the mountain, and the funny thing is that the the big crowd goes for sunrise. Of course, everybody's over on the east side of the parking lot and the and and the uh, visitor center and. I'm the idiot that's over on the west side, ignoring the sunrise, because uh, to me this is a, this is a pretty interesting picture. Um, the moon. Th this is the island of, of Lanai, which is uh, just to the uh, just to the west of Maui. So the moon is sort of tucking in behind that island. Uh, this is the shadow of Haleakala, the volcano, being projected onto the atmosphere. Uh, as the sun as the sun is rising, so you can you can really see the shape of the mountain as it's uh, 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 the sh shape of the through the shadow, and then this is the, the, this cloud layer I was tell telling you about where if you're at the summit you're you're almost always above the level of the cloud, so you get this weird feeling like you're in it, like you're in an airplane but you're on solid ground. Uh, this is my extended panorama, so. Uh, At the last second, I realized I could see both, so I sort of hurried and did a did a quick pan, a couple quick panoramas, and and this one seemed to work out pretty good. Yeah, that's up to 24. Uh, it was, and this was, uh, let's see, nine different frames across about 200 degrees from from left to right. I actually cropped off a little bit off of each side. Uh, some nine frames, yeah, and. I, Put it together in PT glue. This, this was, uh, let's see, I think this was handheld because my, my other camera was on a tripod doing a time lapse, and I had to kind of scramble up to a, a, a higher position to get to get the, this part of the 
horizon. And so the alignment isn't isn't completely perfect. I had to do a little bit of shifting around by hand, but uh, it, it managed to, to line up pretty good. And uh, this one I like a lot because it, it sort of really, it, it, it shows you that the earth is a sphere. But here, here's the earth shadow. Uh, and or maybe it's just a circle, <laughs> and it is it is flat, and it's just a circle. Uh, but the uh, to me it showed it showed you that 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 the Earth is is curved that there's a that we do live on a sphere, um, and so this is the Earth's shadow and the and the full moon rising up uh, into into the shadow. So the the actual shadow and this view uh, didn't last very long, maybe just a few, just a few minutes until it got uh, until it it got uh, much darker. So the altitude that I'm at right now is about 9,000 feet. So there's another 1,000 feet to get to the summit. Uh, I was at, I, I'm at this overlook, this overlook that I liked a lot because you get these uh, pretty nice views and you don't get the crowds that you, you get up at the summit. More back? Yeah, this is the island of, of Lanai here, that the, the, the moon is, uh, this is the horizon, so then the, the moon is just going, essentially going behind the, the island. Yeah, the, these are clouds here, and then uh, there's some clouds here too. You don't really see the ocean in, in, in this picture, I don't think. There might be a little bit here, but then the, the ocean would be much further below this cloud la layer here. Um, this, I, I'm trying to figure out if this area, if these are clouds or this is part of the ocean. It, it, look like, it looks like clouds because generally there's, as you go further lower in, in, in altitude around the islands, there could just be clouds at any moment in time. And then, but, but since we're high, we're much higher above that. You, you see the tops of the clouds. And so let's see. Uh, so I ended up, and uh, this is this is from people Hulu, the area that's right by the right right by the water, and uh, you can you get a lot of coconut trees. And the the uh, uh, one night I was there, it, it rained the entire day, so there wasn't a whole lot of stuff to shoot. And then, but the, I stayed there another two nights, and it was the, the first night was actually pretty uh, pretty clear uh, for for a while. I'll, I'll show you another. With some clouds coming in on another another uh, shoot, and uh, this is the um, the view of the mountain. The very first image that I showed you was uh, uh, I, I, I took that idea, and then the next night I did a, a, a time lapse. So this is a result of a uh, essentially a time lapse uh, put together as a star trail. So uh, looking south, you could sort of see the the, the curve of the stars. The, the southern pole is down th this way. And these are all these cars. As soon as the sun set, uh, the parking lot empties out because then everybody has to go down into Maui, I guess, to their hotels or to have dinner. And so for, for a, about an hour, you, you see all these cars uh, going, going down the, the roads from the, from the mountain. Um, and then if you're, uh, if you're in the stargazing, you, you, you could drive up. To, nobody is driving up. Everybody's driving down. And you, you end up in these empty parking lots on these, these overlooks. Um, which, which to me was great. Um, I'll just show you. I told Preston not to laugh because uh, uh, th I'll show you a, just a brief uh, time lapse video that I put together. And it's a, it's a whole series of, of shorter videos that I was working on, this idea of trying to put together shorter ones in, into a longer one. So this is uh, this is about an hour's worth of the stars going across and, this, and, and the cars zipping down the, the road from the, from the top of the mountain. 